Hello guys, welcome to another Fury Crafting for Hearthstone Mercenaries. Welcome to Players Guild, my name is Loki and I will be your guide yet again to another one of my weird concoctions. And boy is today weird. So you've probably seen the title, you've probably seen the thumbnail, I assume Scott came up with something amazing. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure where to go here, but well, the only thing we can do is go forward. But before we go forward, a couple of reminders. If you guys haven't seen, uh, this is a fourth theory crafting done by me. So there's another free on the channel that you can check out right now. And there's another free coming after this one. Uh, beside that, I did look through all of the collectible mercenaries that are going to be coming at the launch. So you can check those videos on our channel as well. I go in depth through all the abilities, so I'm not going to be going through the abilities in here, uh, but you can check them on our channel. We are closing in slowly, but we are targeting for 1500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you end up enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button. It's going to meet an, uh, meet? mean an awful lot to all of us here at Players Guild. And on 12th of October, just a reminder, there's going to be a live stream where I'm going to be opening all the bundles I got. By now, I have all three of the bundles, so it's going to be a blast opening over 140 packs, because I still have some gold saved up. So it's going to be 140 packs or so opened. Um, anything else? I don't think there's any other announcements, so... Um, let's just go and let's go with the first mercenary, which is going to be Malfurion, Malfurion Storm Rage. So, as you can see, we are going to be going to the nature build. Uh, Malfurion has life root stuff, which initially I underestimated the equipment because I have not read it properly. Uh, so every time you use a nature ability, not only Malfurions but any of your nature abilities, you're going to heal your all of your characters by I think up to nine uh, so that's a lot of healing that procs whenever you're attacking and that procs whenever you're using any sort of nature ability even taunt as long as it's tagged as nature you can keep on healing all of your characters so it's going to be increasingly difficult to get rid of your characters um, and you're going to be getting tons of healing every single turn because you can use three nature abilities, uh, at least for us, we have three nature characters in the front rows. So you can use three nature abilities early on, and well, yeah, <laughs> go from there. That's tons of healing. Uh, we do have some additional healing, of course, as well. Malfurion has AoE or uh, either damage or heal, and he has a uh, very good attacks, etc. He's a decent character but he's mostly here for this uh, life root stuff and the root ability to stop some of the melee characters to actually attack us for a turn. Uh, so Malfurion works really well for the nature so for, of course we want some other nature payoffs and that's where Guff Rune Totem comes in. So Guff is a rare a mercenary but I think he's absolutely amazing. So he's a melee caster. Uh, we are going to mostly be using him with Iron Bark. So when he uses Iron Bark, he gets toned, and anytime you use a nature ability, he gets stats, both attack and health. And then we're using Earth and Racers to increase that stat gain even further. So the idea is that Iron Bark is always going to be the first action uh, for Guff every other turn because there's cooldown one. And then we're just going to use two other nature abilities. And Gaff is just going to get buffed with that. And of course, at the same time, everyone is going to be healed and is going to be protected from any melee attackers. Uh, yes, if we are going to be facing against a fighters, Gaff is going to be in a tough spot uh, because, well, being caster, he's in taking critical damage from fighters. I think it's worth the shot. Uh, we do have a lot of healing. Against AoE, it might do actually quite well as well because we have lots of AoE heal. And the fire, uh, no shadow, is actually going to be critically hitting us, uh, which is good, which means that it's going to be easier to heal up uh, on AoE. 
So Gav is our second uh, mercenary. For our third mercenary, we have Brightwing. Brightwing is an annoying little thing. Thing. Let's say thing. Uh, so he's here for all three of his abilities. So his basic ability is just going to be uh, buffing our bench. I don't think we're going to be using his swap ability very often. We might, eventually. I'm going to go through that uh, in a second why we might. But he's going to be either attacking to buff our back row or we're going to be using Pixie's pouch uh, to heal our AoE. Right, so that uh, so the Pixie does. That's why we have Pixie's pouch to increase that AoE heal, which means that against even the heavy fire composition, we should be fine. Every other turn, uh, we can only heal that much. So against Inferno, it might be a bit problematic. But because of our colors, the only one that's really in danger is Malfurion. So we are going to be looking to boost Malfurion a lot. But Malfurion is not that needed. Of course, when he dies, that's going to be a bit sad. But we do have a backup plan in here as well. Uh, so yeah, Brightwing, we want to use as often as we can to boost our bench. And only when we need to, we're going to be using that Pixie Dust uh, to just heal up. But predominantly boosting the bench. And I'm going to be talking about the phase shift at the very end. Or well, not at the very end, probably at the next character. And you will see what I mean. But eventually we might be using Brightwing uh, to phase shift into another one of our characters on the bench. And the character I'm talking about is Tyrande. So you probably see which way we're going, and this is something that has been pointed out to me uh, in comments on one of our videos. Uh, that Tyrande with uh, Band of the Wilds is actually quite interesting. And I decided to give it a go, and I was thinking how I would do it. So decided that Malfurion and Garth as a nature abilities are really, really good. And then... Uh, Gaff can, if, if Gaff survives long enough, then if he can get any death blows in with his basic attack, he can buff our, the rest of our board, uh, including the bench. If, uh, for example, they're going to decide that we're doing something shady with Brightwing, they kill off Brightwing, or if they kill off Malfurion, or if they kill off Gaff as the biggest threat, uh, then we bring in Tyrande, and then Lune's Grace can also work with the nature abilities. But, yes, the rest of our composition is actually arcane, so we're going to be switching gears uh, for the latter half. So the first one we're going to be bringing out after one of our characters dies is going to be Tyrande. Second one is going to be another arcane uh, character, and at that point, if we still have Brightwing, that's when we can use Phase Shift to have a full arcane bench suddenly popping up, uh, just to surprise the enemy with it. And that's the idea behind this. Uh, that's kind of the trick I want to play on them. So we want to use Illumin's Grace for both Arcane and Nature, essentially. It's not essential to use it for Nature, but it's interesting enough that I wanted to give it a try. And I'm not actually sure how well to run there with uh, Band of the Wilds is actually going to work. But we'll see in practice, right? Uh, next one is... Blink Fox. So Blink Fox is a meme, very, very meme uh, character, but I like it. So in PvP, I'm going to be using Blink Fox with 10th Tail. Uh, Blink Fox has a very good arcane combo attack as his base attack, which can be used to combo with Tyrande. Um, it can be used in many, many different ways to give to do that damage. It has Mana Blink ability, which I think might be really, really good if we use it a turn after we used Elune's Grace, so that we can do Elune's Grace a bit earlier. Uh, or even if we use it on the turn that we use Elune's Grace, but I'm going to be talking through the combo that's there after I'm going to talk about the last character. Uh, but we're using Tenth Tail 4 here. Uh, as equipment because in PvP we can depend on our opponents to use certain types of abilities when we see their builds and we can plan around that. So the way this equipment works as far as I understand is 
because enemy always uses different abilities, this ability, the Mind Thief, is always going to be swapping. It's not swapping on cast, it's swapping every turn. That's why the ability has no cooldown and you can use it immediately. If they do, if they have their own Blink Fox and they use their Mana Blink, we can steal it immediately. Uh, if they have, uh, can't think of uh, anything off the top of my head, but even Tyranda, if they use their Elune's Grace, we can Elune's Grace, our own Elune's Grace. For example, there's tons of things we can do like this. There's tons of setups. Uh, there's even tons of combos we can do with that if they have another arcane ability that we can steal and use with our Elune's Grace. That's just going to be crazy. And probably by now everyone knows who's going to be the very last uh, arcane character for us. And prepare to witness the full power of Millhouse Mana Storm. He's the annoying gnome mage, but he's very, very good. He's one of the three characters, the same as Tyranda. Uh, those are your three characters you get. And generally this build is fairly cheap. The only expensive character is Malfurion. Uh, and as with all of the characters, you can farm them for free. So I am going, eventually I am going to be talking to you through the guides on how to use your free characters to farm. I'm going to be doing a free to play playthrough probably t week three of the game being live. At the beginning, I want to just concentrate on building my own collection, my own mercenaries and getting to the compositions that I want to get to. In case of Milhouse, as I mentioned, we're getting him for free. Uh, he has Arcane Bolt that keeps on giving him free Arcane damage every turn. But we, I think Mana Rod is absolutely amazing if we can upgrade it all the way to the max. That way Arcane Bolt is going to be giving us 7 Arcane damage every other turn. So of course we're going to be getting, on average, half Arcane damage every turn more. And he has the Greater Arcane Missiles. So the combo I was talking about as a very powerful finisher is Elune's Grace into Greater Arcane Missiles. Of course, in the meantime, we managed to get Arcane Bolt off, so we got 7 damage on that. So that's doing a good chunk of damage into Mana Blink to repeat it next turn. Without the Mana Blink, obviously. But having Greater Arcane Missiles cast twice, two turns in a row, I think this is a very powerful combo. And yeah, I was looking for something to do with Blink Fox's mana blink. And the fact that it also makes your abilities faster means that the second combo is going to go off faster. Uh, and it's also going to be able to proc the Blink Fox's arcane combo ability. Or Mind Thief if they got anything ridiculous there. For example, if they got Arcane Bolt as the last ability, and that is possible to happen. So... This is the big combo, that big finisher after we did uh, all the nature stuff. And as I mentioned with Garth, we want to make him a big threat. Hopefully use his attack to take out one or two mercenaries and buff our whole board. So the Milhouse, Tyrande and Blink Fox are not going to be dying that quickly. So that's the idea behind meeting those nature and uh, arcane. And the same Brightwing, we want to boost our back row, our bench, so they don't die because they're generally very, very vulnerable. So I think that nature can actually be used in a very fun way to boost something like that. And we have Tyranda, which is good payoff for both Arcane and nature, uh, which is why I essentially did, uh, why I essentially came up uh, with this build. And now for PvE uh, changes, because I do have some PvE changes. And they're very, very, very minor because characters are the same. We're just changing the equipments. And so we're changing two equipments on Blink Fox. We're taking Arcane Fang uh, rather than Tenth Tail. Reasoning be, being very, very simple. It's on general, the AI abilities are going to be worse for us because there's tons of tokens that have slow attacks and tons of abilities that are just not good against that specific opponent. So I'd rather just increase flat out damage that we get on Arcane Fling. And if we get a decent ability, we get decent ability. Be, uh, but beside that, we don't need to really bother about the Mind Thief in PvE. And uh, Milhouse Pandastorm, 
Leyline Wand, I think, is going to be a bit better. So then we can spy Arcane Blast and then use Leyline Wand. Uh, so the Greater Arcane Missiles on the combo turn that I was talking about with Mana Blink uh, to take off some of the low level characters if we are going for that. Uh, we can, of course, in PvE, it's easier to just bring out your Arcane stuff or bring out your melee stuff, whichever you feel is going to work better. For example, if they have casters, you can bring out the Arcane stuff because then you have Tyrande for it. If they have fighters, you bring out the Nature stuff because you have Tyrion, uh, not Tyrion, Malfurion in it. And yeah, this is one of the builds that I actually did not include the Tyrion in. Uh, yeah, there we go. First build, first build, I think, that didn't include a Tyrion in it. I wanted to do something fun, something more combo, I guess. It's The whole composition here is very combo, it's very oriented. In PvP, it's easy to see that it's that nature into arcane and that arcane becomes the big threat. In PvE, you have the choice between the two. Both have two uh, casters. So in PvE, if you want to, another option I was thinking about is swapping Brightwing for Lady Anaconda actually. Because you have some heal, a single target heal there, you have a decent damage ability and then you can spawn beasts as well uh, as additional attackers. So if you feel that having so many casters is problematic, feel free to swap Brightwing in PvE. It might be actually, but now I talked myself into it. Lady in PvE, Lady Anaconda might be better than Brightwing. So then you have a flat um, nature and flat arcane. And if you're fighting against, let's say, a mostly caster, you can actually go uh, Tyrande, uh, Lady Anaconda, and Gaff, and you should be fine. Uh, or uh, Tyrande, Malfurion, and Lady Anaconda, something like that. You should be doing fine. Maybe you don't want Malfurion against casters, but it's again something that you're going to work out yourself. But this is my approach to nature slash arcane build. And I like those combo builds. And I think I should have looked more into that. But swapping uh, strategies is very difficult to make it reliable, right? Another one I could look into swapping into was probably orcs. Uh, because, of course, buffing all your ben your whole bench and then you swap into them. Or maybe some dragon synergy because we have Brightwing, we could get Alex Raza, or we could get uh, the Voon, Warmaster Voon. The stands of um, symbiotic uh, tribes here. So I'm really excited to try more of them. So, yeah, this is my approach to Nature Arcane, which I said so many times already, you probably have enough but in the spirit of Elude's Grace that lets us repeat a lot of abilities twice um, I just said it so many times. Thank you guys for watching let me know down in the comments what do you think about this build and how would you build the nature or arcane builds or would you like, like to try this one or do you have other ideas for the arcane slash nature let me know down in the comments and I'll see you again tomorrow with yet another build and I still can't decide what's going to be coming tomorrow. Cheers guys, see you next time.